Kamala Harris reading the teleprompter gives Joe Biden hope that he could give speeches for a uh, big pay. <laughs> Let me just tell you that right now. She gives him hope that he could get hired for half a million like old Bubba Clinton did, giving speeches around the world. That's how bad she is. She's worse than he is. She read her speech at the Amy Coney Barrett. Well, I think it was Amy Coney Barrett. It may have been a legislative hearing on the uh, Affordable Care Act. I'm not sure between the two which one it was. I'm pretty sure it was Amy Coney Barrett's day one, but the Democrats acted like it was a legislative markup session on the ACA. We'll get into that in a second. And they're disgraceful. I mean, have you ever seen anybody in public behave the way these people do, the way they conduct themselves in these hearings? I've never seen anything like it. Never. <laughs> you talk about the, all those pictures of, of, of supposed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And that's yeah. fine. I mean, whatever the stories are the stories and that's fine. But what, what are we there for? We're not there to have a legislative hearing on the ACA. And exactly. it also, right. They made a nice case. They made a nice case for universal care. I personally think anybody who gives you something can take it away. I'd much rather the free market handle medicine and with great competition and, you know, force prices down. But what the heck? We're trying to. This is a, a Supreme Court hearing. What are they doing? Yeah, they're making political speeches about the ACA. They're making legislative sp speeches about the ACA. And it just shows you how poorly the Republicans have handled this whole ACA thing because it was really a winning issue to say. I mean, to listen to them fight for this, it's like, oh yeah, geez, we I mean, we, we won't be able to kill people anymore and kill babies anymore, and we uh, we have to get we have all these high deductibles and we can't choose our oh god, we don't want to lose that. The Republicans can't make the um. Can't make the argument against it. And they haven't been for 10 years. They told us they're going to get rid of it and all this. And they, and they haven't. Yeah, they got rid of the individual mandate. Okay, fine. And they, come, they say, well, that's the main thing. Uh, but you listen to them today trying to use it as a um, political weapon against um, the president and uh, Amy Coney Barrett to say this is, this is what it's all about. Meanwhile, you're making a case to someone who literally her job is to do just the opposite, which is to not legislate from the bench. That's what the people you put on the court do. She's not going to do that. And by the way, there's, no, there's absolutely no evidence they point out. Oh, she's written about it, don't you know? There's no evidence that she would... Um, it's, like, it's like Roe versus Wade, this argument that all of a sudden it's just... At, there's more evidence that it would not be touched than there is that they would, to be quite honest. You could make the argument that it would, that Roe versus Wade would not be overturned. And by the way, if it is, it just puts it in the state's hands. So again, they make the argument on... Which way do you believe? Where do you believe it should be? I believe it should be in the state's hands myself. What do you think? Well, I mean, it, it, at the very worst, it should be in the state's hands. I just think states should have more... Uh... Autonomy. I, I like uh, decentralization of everything federal, but just asking you. But I'm, I'm, not for, I'm not for killing kids, no matter whose decision it is. 100%. So that would be my starting 100%, 100%. position. 